Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and it is time to revisit Intel Arc in 2023. If you cast your mind back to my launch day review last October, you'll probably remember I wasn't especially keen on either the A750 or the A770, simply due to the number of software problems. Well, Intel has been hard at work and is promising some significant improvements with its latest drivers, so today we'll be putting that to the test. I've also got Acer's Predator Bifrost A770 custom card to use as part of this testing, so without further ado, let's dive in and find out what is really new with Intel Arc. Our testing today then is pretty straightforward. First of all, I grabbed Intel's A750 limited edition 8GB card as well as the Acer Predator Bifrost A770 16GB card and set about benchmarking both of these GPUs using the 4123 driver which was the latest from Intel at the time I started testing. To see how far the cards have actually progressed, I also grabbed the 3491 driver from all the way back in October. And that does mean data from both the 3491 driver and the 4123 driver will be included in our charts. And that will look a little something like this. I tested 12 games in total at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. And we've also got comparisons against the RTX 3060 and the RX 6600 XT. All of our testing was done using our regular GPU test system, which is powered by MSI. This is built on Intel's i9-12900K CPU, paired with the MSI MEG Z690 Unify motherboard, and we've also got 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory. All testing was done using the MSI MPG321 UART-QD 4K monitor. Incidentally, this is also the last time we will be using this test rig, as I've actually just switched to a system with a 13900KS, but stay tuned for that content coming soon. As I said, in this video we are going to be focusing on 1080p and 1440p data. I won't go over every single one of our benchmark charts for reasons that will become clear. However, if you do want to see the raw data from every single one of the 12 games we tested, then head over to the written article on kitguru.net. We're going to kick things off then with a game I don't actually usually test, but funnily enough, it's usually the game with the most concurrent players on Steam. I am of course talking about CSGO, a game which initially gave Intel Arc some significant problems, but Intel is now claiming the performance should be much, much better. It's pretty easy to see why people weren't happy with Arc's performance in this title, with the 1% lows using the 3491 driver being completely terrible, and the game just felt very stuttery at 1080p. Thankfully, the 4123 driver has fixed these issues completely, with performance now being right in line with the RTX 3060 and the RX 6600 XT. It's also the same story at 1440p. The game has transformed from being a frankly stuttery mess into being something that's as playable as it gets with this game engine. Now, the A770 is about 20 FPS behind the 6600 XT, but compared to where it was before, this really is a transformative difference. Just to visualize this further, I also put together a frame time graph for the A770 when running CSGO. You can see just how inconsistent the frame times were originally, with huge spikes and then huge dips from one frame to the next. Now, there are still a couple of frame time spikes when using the 4123 driver, but the overall frame time delivery is just so much more consistent. Total War Warhammer 3 is another game that has seen big improvements. As a DX11 title on the 3491 driver, Arc performance was just way behind the competition and it also featured some pretty nasty visual artifacting. 
With the 4123 driver though, we're actually looking at a 50% performance increase for the A770, and that puts it right up there with the RTX 3060, and it's now 15% faster than the RX 6600 XT. Likewise, at 1440p, we do see a similar jump forward, with the 4123 driver providing a 38% uplift in terms of the average frame rate, but crucially, it's the 1% lows that see a 59% uplift, resulting in much tighter frame time dispersal than what we saw originally. It's fair to say though that not every single DX11 title out there will see an improvement from the newer driver. I tested God of War at both 1080p and 1440p, and there was no measurable performance improvement when jumping to the newer driver. Of course, you will see some minor differences in the frame rate numbers, but that really is just down to run-to-run -run variance, and it does not indicate a difference in overall performance. That being said, there were actually a couple of DX12 titles that did show a small performance improvement, including Forza Horizon 5. At 1080p, for instance, we're observing a 3% improvement to the average frame rate, which is just outside margin for error, but slightly more significant is the 5% increase to the 1% lows. Now, this wouldn't be super noticeable in-game, but again, it's just tightening up those frame times when using the 4123 driver. Gears 5 also saw a small boost to the average frame rate when using the 4123 driver. However, rather weirdly, the 1% lows are still pretty poor when compared to the 6600 XT and the RTX 3060. This does go to show that the latest drivers aren't a magic instant fix for every performance problem that Arc may have. Something Intel themselves have said, there is still a long road ahead of them. There's also plenty of other games which just don't show any performance improvement using the latest driver. Cyberpunk 2077, for instance, is a good example here, with still poor 1% lows which are apparent when playing the game. Horizon Zero Dawn as an overall experience is much better, but again, there's been no improvements made by the 4123 driver when compared to the 3491 driver. Overall then, across the 12 games I tested, clearly the performance improvements in CSGO and Total War Warhammer 3 do stand out as being the most significant, and honestly, they are real game changers. There's a few other examples where the average frame rates improved between 4 to 6%, but plenty of games also showed no real difference. That's broadly the same picture as we see at 1440p as well. The good news is that no games I tested saw a performance decrease, and I didn't notice any weird driver bugs in these 12 games either. What this means for Intel Arc versus its competition, however, is quite significant. Based on the 3491 driver, the A770 really made no sense against the RTX 3060 as it came in 15% slower on average at 1080p. With the 4123 driver, however, it's on par if not marginally faster overall while it's now just behind the RX 6600 XT. We also know though that the A770 does scale better at 1440p where it climbs to the top of the chart using the 4123 driver and it now offers a 7% improvement to its 1% lows versus the RTX 3060. Naturally, that performance increase also means a big improvement to cost per frame. The A770 is retailing for £370 at the time of filming and the 4123 driver translates into an 18% reduction in cost per frame versus the 3491 driver. It has to be said though that the A750 is the real star of the show, offering class leading value at 1080p. Likewise, up at 1440p, we're now looking at a 19% reduction in cost per frame for the A770, purely due to the extra performance on offer from the 4123 driver. It may not be quite as good value as the RTX 3060, but it really is a massive improvement from the launch driver. 
Now I do have a few other performance metrics that I do want to cover in this video, but before we get onto those, it's worth taking a closer look at the Acer Predator Bifrost A770. You may have already seen it from a few B-roll clips, but this card has a pretty unique overall design, featuring a 70mm blower fan and one 90mm axial fan for its cooling. Those fans sit within a premium feeling shroud that actually makes use of a fair amount of brushed metal, and we can also see a metal backplate that features a whole section of repeating text. If you didn't already know that this was a Predator card, you certainly do now. We also get plenty of RGB lighting from the Bifrost with the two fans which light up along with the Predator logo on the front side. I have to say it is a good looking implementation overall and you can actually preview a range of different effects from within Acer's software. Now, despite the amount of metal used for the Bifrost, it's actually a relatively light card weighing in at 1.16 kilos on my scale. So that actually means it's barely any heavier than Intel's own limited edition model. It's also impressively compact in a world where RTX 4090s are just ridiculously large. This is a pleasant dual slot card measuring in just 267 millimeters long and 117.8 millimeters tall. Power is supplied by two 8-pins compared to the limited edition which has one 8-pin and one 6-pin, while we can also see three DisplayPort 2.0 ports and one HDMI 2.1. As for the next section in this video, this is the first Intel custom card that I have reviewed, so we've only got one other point of comparison and that's Intel's own limited edition model. That being said, the Bifrost does actually come with some downloadable software and Acer offers a choice of the default or the turbo modes. For interest sake, I did actually test both of these modes for the Bifrost, so you will see two data points for the Acer GPU, but of course, only one for the Intel Limited Edition. Kicking off with thermals then, there's really very little difference between the two cards. Out of the box, the Bifrost hit 71 degrees under load and it ran 3 degrees hotter using the turbo mode due to its increased power consumption. Intel's Arc Limited Edition card remains a very well built model however and this peaked at just 70 degrees on the GPU. Likewise, there's basically nothing to split these cards when looking at memory thermals either. The Bifrost using its default mode hit 70 degrees, while the Intel Limited Edition ran just 2 degrees hotter, so it really is a negligible difference. The main benefit to using the Bifrost over Intel's own card, however, is that it does actually run a touch quieter. I measured it in operating at 36 decibels under load, and that marks a 3 decibel reduction against the Limited Edition card. Weirdly though, in my testing, the turbo mode actually operated with the same exact fan speeds as the default profile, peaking at 1490 RPM. I have to say that fan control as a whole is still a bit funny on Intel Arc, even with the 4123 driver. Using Acer's software for instance, you can actually set a manual fan speed with 10% steps, but even when I selected a fixed 30% fan speed, the reported fan RPM actually still fluctuated, so there is definitely still some hysteresis issues going on. I could, however, see a difference between the default and the turbo modes when looking at graphics card only power draw. Granted, it wasn't a big difference, but the turbo mode pulled 221.5 watts compared to just under 213 watts for the default mode, and that was tested in Cyberpunk 2077. Funnily enough though, that extra power really didn't translate into an increase in performance for the Bifrost. I measured next to no difference in frame rates between the default and the turbo modes, so that also means you don't get any real performance benefit versus the Intel Limited Edition, even with the Bifrost's higher power target. Overall then, there is no doubt in my mind that Intel's ARC GPUs are significantly more viable now in 2023 than they were back at launch. The new driver really has led to some massive performance increases, 
Just take a look at CSGO, for instance, which has absolutely been transformed from a stuttery mess into an experience that's just as good as you would get from the RTX 3060 or the RX 6600 XT. The new driver also brought significant improvements to Total War Warhammer 3 and a number of visual glitches that I first encountered back in October with the launch driver were no longer present. I also have to say that overall stability as a whole does seem to be a lot better as I only had one crash during my testing with the 4123 driver and that just happened to be in Cyberpunk. Also, we can't ignore the fact that Intel Arc Control Center is no longer an overlay. That's right, you can now actually move around the window and even minimize it, so that really is a much more pleasant user experience. Of course, as I alluded to, this new driver isn't an instant fix for all of Arc's problems. Idle power draw does remain high, hitting almost 50 watts when the GPU is simply displaying the Windows desktop, and that's compared to just 12 watts for the RTX 3060. I also had a weird issue during my testing with the A770 where I simply could not get a display signal using this card after I'd actually used DDU on the GPU that I'd tested previously, and the only way to get around this was to clear the CMOS every time, and that happened about two or three times during my testing. Other issues include fan control, which does still seem to be pretty buggy, while a couple of DX12 games I tested still have pretty inconsistent 1% lows, and that includes Gears 5 and Cyberpunk 2077. To Intel's credit, they are definitely saying there is still work to be done, and I've actually sat in on a couple of press briefings with Tom Peterson, and I have to say, the overall vibe is that they are absolutely committed to further improving the overall software experience for Intel Arc. So you can bet as and when new drive updates do come out later this year and maybe even into the future, we will definitely be checking those out and reporting back on what's changed. A final word has to go to the Acer Predator Bifrost A770. Being completely honest, as the company's first DIY GPU, is really not bad at all. Across the board, it is generally a match for Intel's limited edition, but with the Bifrost having one key benefit that it does run a touch quieter under load. Here in the UK, it's currently listed at £450 on Acer's web store, but there is a £50 instant discount, so it'll really set you back £400. That's actually a £30 premium compared to Intel's limited edition version, and I'm not totally convinced it's actually worth it, as the two are very closely matched. I guess it's just going to come down to whether or not you prefer the RGB or the overall appearance of the Acer Bifrost, which, if you do, it isn't a bad card. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you can stay up to date when we upload a new video. In the description, you'll also find links to our Discord server and also our brand new merch store where you can pick up a couple of cool t-shirts. That is it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic Fortkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.